Brisbane is the capital city of Australia's state of Queensland, and it's home to the Brisbane River, the longest in southeast Queensland. In the now murky waters of this river, you'll find a unique population of a particular species of fish. Armed with some scientific information, I want to look for answers about why this fish is found here and how it lives. Hey, Lucky. Hey, Nigel. What a view, mate. Beautiful day, isn't it? I bought heaps. Awesome. Let's do it. Let's catch a fish. To help me try and catch one of these fish, I've enlisted the help of gun local angler, Lucky Reed. Our job today is to understand Brisbane's king threadfin salmon, and to do that, we have to catch one. That's lock in my job today, and in the dirty waters of the Brisbane River, they can take some finding. Threadfin salmon weren't always common here. Anglers like Lockie tell of these fish appearing in the river in the 1990s. Flooding periods between 2004 and 2011 have promoted growth of the stocks, and today they are a more common capture. The king threadfin salmon grows to 40 kilos and 1.7 metres and lives for around 20 years. It grows quickly, feeds on bait fish and prawns, and it's found mainly in the muddy tidal reaches of the estuaries. The fish feeds close to the bottom and once hooked, it's a very powerful runner. Yeah, today, Nigel, we're going to head out the front here, out to the port, have a look in some deeper water. Uh, this time of year, the fish could be moving upstream, so if we can't find them out there, we'll head up and have a look up there. Bit of luck, they're moving that ship. That's one of the best spots in the river. It's a very different sight to what you would have seen here 200 years ago, but it could be these really big ships that are one of the reasons you find King Threadfin salmon in the Brisbane River today. The growth of Brisbane has drastically changed the river. Dredging to enable ship access began in the late 1800s, and the waterway has since turned from a shallow, clear river to the deep and murky system we see today. But it's this combination that the local salmon seem to thrive upon. Here we go, look at that. We're onto them. Righto. We're gonna start fishing here. Here's the lure. Little mud flat, there's fish cruising up and down it. Let's get a lure into the water and see what we can drum up here. Threadfin salmon once found won't always bite, so you've got to make it count when they do. It's supposed to be a little bit easier than that. Just pulled the hooks on a really, really good fish. Straight into it almost. Still in wake up mode. Quick little bite, one run, and the hooks are pulled. Far out. Just a matter of time now, Lockie. Fish is here. Though. One bit. Just gotta find the right fish. There. There. Oh, here we go. What do you reckon, Lockie? Oh, I reckon it might be a, Not a small dewy, that one, somehow, but yeah, we'll have a look. It. Up on the flats there. Here he comes. Oh, it's oh, a flat flatty. Head. It's a big flathead. Look at that. There we go, first fish of the morning. Big flatfish. It woke me up, especially after yeah. losing that fish before. I was a little bit trigger happy and to feel that clunk again. Go. These threadfin salmon which lurk around these mud flats are vibration feeders and we're using a really subtle lifting motion with lures that vibrate. And the reason we pick those is we want those fish to detect that movement and come over and see what we got, but we're keeping them very close to bottom. And the risk when you're fishing close to bottom is catching these. This is very much this flathead's lucky day because typically that's an awesome eating size fish. But today, because Lockie's right into tagging and releasing fish in this part of the world, we're gonna tag this one, put it into the tagging program, and let it go. Catch him when he's a lot bigger. Absolutely. It's all handy info. Don't have to be a scientist to collect it, do you? No, you don't. No. Let's catch a threadfin. Let's do it. It's been quite interesting with what we found with tagging the threadfin. Uh, some of the fish tagged up in the, in the city reaches have been recaptured out here in the port. Um, other fish have stayed up there. Lockie belongs to the group Suntag and he tags hundreds of fish a year that when recaptured, provide information about growth and movements. We're using small lures that vibrate in the water when you lift them and the idea is these are weighted and we're gonna fish them really close to the bottom. With a size like that, they can be a bait, they can be a prawn, but with fish that use vibration to find their food, this is the perfect option. Oh, look at them on the sounder, Lockie. Look at them here. Yeah, look at that. They're up and down this bank. 
It's a matter of time. Come on. That's a good That's fish. A, there we go. There we go. There we go. This is what we're here for, Lockie. This is what we're here for. Where's he going to go? Here we got this. All right. What are we going to do? That's a good That's fish. A, there we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, that looks like a thread yes. fit to me, mate. Here we go. This is what we're here for, Lockie. This is what we're here for. Where's he going to go? Him here. We got this. Right. What are we going to do? I'm going to come in behind him, mate. So we go around the other side of this. I'm just going to go easy, mate. Oh, he's around something, he's around something, he? he's around something. Yeah, yeah, he's around something. Okay, we can go to the back. Yeah, of the he's front. around stuff. I can feel parade all through stuff. Oh, no. He's around all sorts here. He's around all sorts. Okay, what do I do? That parade is dragging around something down in there. It's all sorts of gnarly stuff. I think I just lost him. Yep. Oh, no, he's still there, he's still there. He just stopped. No! This is not what we wanted. Come on. This is a big fish. But it panics and it runs really hard through it. It's going to break the line. But if we can, if we can just bring it back to the structure and hope. A bit of luck might go our way. Jeez, he's got some line out on you too, hasn't he? It is just going. Uh, uh, uh. I've got him out. Still on there? Oh, I lost him. It? I think I lost him. <sighs> it's not really fair. Second one of the morning. Got the lure right. Got the retrieve right. A fish that normally plays fair. Till the day we show up and try and catch one. I'm gonna go up the back and sit for a while. Before I break stuff. <laughs> Survey the damage. Yeah. Well, I'm truly scuffed up. I wasn't going to win that one. Retire and rethink. King threadfin form highly localised and genetically separated populations. Starting life as males, they turn into females around six years of age and they breed around the mouths of rivers in spring. These traits make salmon easy to overfish by commercial and recreational fishing practices. Hang on. Yep, got one. Got one. Good fish? No, yeah, I think, a good fish. Right. I think he's alright. I think he's okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lockie. We are back. I'm gonna drive up away from this structure, mate. I'm yeah. keep him away. I don't like that structure, Lockie. Yes! You beauty. <laughs> what we want, mate. Yeah, this is exactly what we want. Drive it as far away from that nasty stuff <laughs> as you can, <laughs> Lockie. Let's see if we can get him out over this ledge here. Oh, I'll tell you what. Whew. It's gonna soften up a bit on him now. Soft mouths, so you don't want to go too hard on them. All right, we're well clear of structure now, Come Nige. On. So... Stay on. It's all up to you from here, buddy. Stay on. Stay on. Well, it's not a thread fin. It's one of the bycatch species. It fights quite a lot like them at times. <laughs> the Mulloway, also known as a Jewfish, colloquially a Jewy. Normally, we love catching these, but not today. <laughs> not today. I'll take him any time. I'm not going to say not today because I do love catching them. Right, he's ready, Lockie. Yes. Not the right species. It's an is okay it? second place, isn't it? <laughs> this is our southern cousin of the black dewfish from the tropics. You find these right around our southern waters, across the Indian Ocean, in places like South Africa, they call cobble yo, and grow up to the 100 pound mark. This guy's got a lot of growing ahead of him. He's about to get a tag in him. He's gonna go back. The clock's starting to tick down and we haven't got a thread fin on board yet. Our next spot is fishing around the wharf here. Our only problem could be security. They get a little bit exuberant when boats get too close. I'm gonna give it a shot and see how we go. Oh, there's fish here, there's fish here. Just here, righto. Are we too close? Oh, we can give it a go. We might make these casts quick. We're desperately trying to get one of these local thread fin to bite. When you're coming close to the port here, sometimes security's pretty excited. 
and they don't like fishers coming too close. We're outside the zone now, but give them time. We'll see how much they like us being here. It's an intriguing way to fish. These little soft vibration lures, getting them right on the bottom, and then ever such slight little lifts just to keep it close to bottom. Braided line so you can feel everything the lure does, and all you're waiting for is that addictive dunk. Suddenly means something's eating it. Yeah, there's three or four sitting just off that locky. Yep, there we go, Nige, we're on. Good one? Yep. Yes, locky. Yes. Legend. What can I do? Uh, we we'll get do? that net ready. I'll just lead this fish out here into some deeper water. Back the drag off a little bit. Let's see it. Yes. That feels like a yes. thread thing to me. Saw those fish sitting there, eh? And we haven't been chased away. I'm sure we were 50 metres away though, so wouldn't have been a problem. It's come out wide, which is what we wanted. Good fish here. It's ready? Yeah, I think so. Yes, come on. Take it easy. They've uh, got really soft mouths, these fish, so we just got to take it easy. It's making me nervous. <laughs> Shaking. We've been trying for this one for a while. That, uh, that bite's what we, what we fish for most of the time. You can sit there for hours and bounce these lures over the fish and just waiting for that uh, that clunk of when the fish hits it. Oh, look at this. Look at this. That's what we fished for. Oh, lucky. Just lead him to me just slightly. Turn it turn him around, mate. We'll get that net underneath him. Yes. There he is, mate. We've got him. That's what we've done, mate. We've got him. <laughs> what a special fish. Have a look at them. Gold. It's literally Brisbane River gold. Oh. What a prize, what an absolute prize. These big forked tails, that's where their speed comes from. Big shoulder, and look at this. These fish, they come from a family called the polynemidae. And poly in Greek means many, nemidae means filament. So this is what he uses to feel the vibration. It's such a unique design. He can pick up all those vibrations, not so good with the eyesight. They work really well in the dirty water. Downturn mouth for sucking in prawns and bait. And mate, that is such a cool fish to see on board. You've Absolutely. done well. We've got you him. have done well. <laughs> well, we're going to tag this fish, which is what we do with all of the threadfin and, and also mulloway we get in the river. Uh, we're trying to help understand where these fish go and, and what they do and their, their habits. And we'll have to release weight this fish. He's got a bit of barotrauma. Barotrauma means fish has come up quickly from depth, so their swim bladder doesn't have time to cope with it. A bit like a diver with the bends. Best way to get them back and happy is to get them back down to the same depth. So that's what that release weight does. So you ready to go there, Nige? We'll let him go. Yep. Down you go, matey. Down you go. Beautiful. Yeah. You legend. <laughs> Threadfin were once prolific in the Noosa River, 100 kilometres to the north. They all but disappeared as the river started to shallow in the 80s. And I can't help but wonder if this forced these fish to migrate south to Moreton Bay and the Brisbane River. Salmon in the Logan River suggest they are still trying to push their way south. Go on a high-vis vest. Coming pretty quick. Yeah, he doesn't look too happy. There. Just caught a fish here too. This would be just about right. We're about to be chased, I reckon. Sorry, mate. Righto. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Thanks, mate. We'll get out there. I can't help but think how special this population of threadfin are, knowing that we can still legally net big numbers of these fish, and that in 2010 the Queensland government stated the sustainability of commercial threadfin fishing was uncertain. So to protect these fish into the future, I think uh, we need some, some education in the, in the rec sector there with releasing the fish. Um, barotrauma is a, a big issue with these fish out of the deep water. Um, not only that, I think uh, we need to put some, some pressure on the commercial fishery. Um, I think the netting of these, these threadfin outside the river while they're spawning is something that really needs to be looked at. It's not taken seriously enough. And, I think uh, we need to do something about that. The 
day is now getting long and it's killing me that I haven't landed one of these local salmon. Apparently I suck at catching daytime threadfin salmon in the Brisbane River, but I'm not done. As the Brisbane City lights come out, apparently these fish come out to play. So maybe, just maybe, I can still catch one. We've got a complete change of tactics now, whereas earlier in the day we were jigging soft vibration lures deep down. Now these fish are gonna be up high in the water feeding on bait fish, so shallow diving lure, fished up near the top. Hopefully this will get the job done. Okay, so what we got here, Nige, is the current's running down along the back of this wharf here, and these threadfin salmon are gonna be sitting in the shadows there, waiting for the bait to get washed into the shadows. So our lure's right on the shadow line, up current, and we should be in for a show. <sighs> should be. Come on, it's been a long day. Oh, yeah, yeah got, him, go. got him, got him, got him. the one we're after, mate. I'm going to drive you forward. I don't know. Yeah, he's just coming out. Mm, you reckon? Not sure. Where's he going? Here we go. What have we got? Oh, that's the biggest flathead ever. Look at that. Oh. I thought you had one there. He has. The way it hit that lure, I thought, it's about to get <laughs> ferocious here. <laughs> that was a chunk of a flathead. Whoa. Whoa. It's not only the threadfin that are in around the lights eating bait, <laughs> it's predators like your flatty. Not the fish we wanted, but it's a start. Yes, yes. That's one. That's a better fish. Better fish, mate? That's a better fish, yep, yep. Nice. Hasn't woken up yet. So Hasn't good. woken up yet. Here it goes. Yeah, that's a good fish, Here mate. it goes. <laughs> Come on. That's gonna back the drag right off. Let's hope he doesn't run through stuff now. Oh, come on. It's been a long day. Started very early, we're still going. Stay on. Oh, got the shakes again. Yeah, it's a good fish, mate. It's a big fish. I don't want him to go that way. I reckon if you go that way, and just we'll just see if we can, we can just tow him this way a bit. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Get a bit more on him, mate. A little Pull bit more. Come on, Lockie. Come on, mate. <laughs> I want this. Been waiting all day for this fish I want the monkey you. off my back. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, gee. Where is it? I want to see it. There it is. There it is. It's a joey. It's a joey. Oh, shouldn't be so disappointed to catch them. <laughs> you shouldn't complain about catching joey. No, you shouldn't complain. No. Oh, they fought fair for a joey. Pretty fish, pretty fish. And the mulloway, look at that. He's been in there munching away on prawns and bait fish. We thought he was a threadfin, but no. Oh, it made me earn it though. Let's get him back in the water. Get on this threadfin hunt yet again. They're starting to bite. Good sign, mate. What's going on here? What have we caught? Bloody, I'd say. It's shaking its head a lot. Oh, <laughs> look at a big dog. A big pig. Look at the size of this thing. Oh, I thought maybe, maybe, till it shook its head. <laughs> and then I went, no. I think today, it's not the day for Nige catching his threadfin salmon. I've come this close. Mate, that's how it goes. That is how it goes. I'll get this floody in the net, and I reckon, I don't think I can cast anymore. <laughs> I think I'm physically done. <laughs> it started at first light. It's well past sunset, and I'm done. Let's net this. Let's do it. Let's find a boat ramp. <laughs> oh, here's a chunk. Catching this tag flathead proves to me that the tagging program has great value. How's that for a big Brisbane River flathead? A tag one. It's going to go back. And off into the night time you go. Thanks, mate. You've been a trooper. You've shown us the sights. Shown us how to catch a threadfin salmon. I'm going to have to come back and do it again. And mate, how cool is that to finish with a tagged fish? Just to show you how important this program is. Wreck anglers, collecting data, learning about fish. And what a valuable fishery this is. Thanks, mate. You've been a trooper. And we'll see you on the water again soon. Hope so, mate. The Brisbane River threadfin salmon are truly a unique population of fish. And hopefully with proper management from all sectors, we don't just sustain the population, but see it grow in the years to come.